Galilean church, growing in, living out, and celebrating the grace and love of Christ Jesus our Lord. Our call to worship today is Psalm 16, that we will read responsively. <coughs> Come bless the Lord in whom we find our refuge and safety. You are our God, God of our lives, you are in our hands. Come bless the Lord who guides us on the path of eternal life, whose presence strengthens and sustains us. You are our God, you will not be shaken. Let's worship God together. We'll continue with our gathering hymn. Gonna lay down my burden Down by the labyrinth Down by the labyrinth Down by the labyrinth Gonna lay down my burden Down by the labyrinth Down by the labyrinth Gonna spread the word of Jesus Down by the labyrinth Down by the labyrinth Down by the labyrinth Gonna spread the word of Jesus Down by the labyrinth Down by the labyrinth Gonna help my brother and sister Down by the labyrinth Down by the labyrinth down by the labyrinth, gonna help my brother and sister. Down by the labyrinth, down by the labyrinth. Gonna pray for my salvation. Down by the labyrinth, down by the labyrinth. Down by the labyrinth, gonna pray for my salvation. Down by the labyrinth, down by the labyrinth. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Sovereign God, ruler of all hearts, you call us to obey you and your favor, and you favor us with true freedom. Keep us faithful to the ways of your Son, that the leaving behind of all that hinders us, we may steadfastly follow your paths through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Amen. We'll continue with the first read. <laughs> The first reading is from 1 Kings chapter 19. Then the Lord said to Elijah, Go return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazel as king over Aram. Also you shall anoint Jehu son of Nimshi as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elijah son of Shaphat of Abel Malaha as prophet in your place. So he set out from there and found Elisha, son of Shaphat, who was plowing. There were twelve yoke of oxen ahead of him, and he was with the twelve. Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle over him. He left the oxen, ran after Elijah, and said, Let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. Then Elijah said to him, Go back again, for what have I done to you? He returned from following him, took the yoke of oxen, and slaughtered them. Using the equipment from the oxen, he boiled their flesh and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he set out and followed Elijah and became his servant. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The second reading is from Galatians chapter 5. For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters, only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summoned up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. 
For what the flesh desires is opposed to the spirit, and what the spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious. Fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enemies, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like this. I am warning you as I have warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things, and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. Word of God, Word of Life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. When the days drew near for Jesus to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. But they did not receive him, because his face was set toward Jerusalem. When his disciples James and John saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them, and they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Have any of you ever really been excited about something like joining a group or helping a neighbor or hanging out with a loved one? And when you conveyed your willingness or excitement to them with just a word or a sentence or two, they burst your proverbial bubble. Hey, I'd really love to help. Uh, no, we're good. Could I be part of the group? Uh, no, we're full. Well, those deflating and discouraging and Debbie Downer words hurt, don't they? And that sort of seems like what we got in the lesson today. Now, I don't know about you, but I really struggled to make sense of today's gospel, especially the second half. It's one of those passages we read and we immediately shrug it off and move on. If you ask me confusion or disappointment or maybe even a little anger would be an appropriate response to Jesus telling us that being a disciple means turning your back on your family or responsibilities well, that oh-so-harsh response is definitely not what we want to hear from our loving and our kind and our gentle shepherd. But there it is. So our first response is to ignore it without trying to understand it. 
it's too unpleasant, too hard, too challenging. But here I am today, your amateur fill-in guy, who's supposed to preach on what's given to me. So skipping this tough text is apparently not an option for me this morning. But is what Jesus is saying what it really sounds like? Is being a Christian really at odds with being a responsible and good family person? Or is there another message for us here? Well, I sure hope so, and let's see if we can together find that other message. Now, today's gospel is difficult, but of course so is true discipleship. And that, I think, is the message in a nutshell. Bonhoeffer, the Lutheran pastor and martyr, lived this lesson the hard way, losing his life, challenging Nazis in World War II Germany. When you are called by Christ, he said, there comes a time when you need to clearly and unequivocally declare and live out your faith commitment. And that, I think, is what Jesus is telling us today. The confrontational story of today opens with Jesus on the road, kind of a pilgrimage, where he sets his face toward Jerusalem. The text tells us he's resolute, he's single-minded, he's committed. And along the way there are gawkers and supporters and maybe even some joiners. Now as Jesus walks toward his goal, someone, actually several people, ask if they can join him or come along. <clears throat> the first guy, eager to follow Jesus, says, hey, I'll follow you wherever you go. Now this sounds very much like something our leader, our shepherd, would just love to hear. Hey, thank you. That's great. Welcome to the team. I'd love to have you follow. But no. Jesus' response is short and really sounds kind of rude and unreasonable. Foxes have dens, birds have nests, but are you really ready to rough it? Critters have all sorts of places to rest, not us. And oh, by the way, we're not going to be staying in the best places, and you certainly won't be treated well by everybody. This is no easy journey. Wow, what a recruiting pitch to a would-be follower. Well, the next guy comes along and Jesus says to her, follow me. Well, she must be thrilled that this Messiah, this shepherd, invites her to follow. Sure, she says, but like you or me would do, she says, first you need to excuse me to make arrangements. My dad just died, and I'm making arrangements for his funeral. To which Jesus gives another, wow, what is that all about response? Follow me now, and let the dead bury their dead. All of us could have been that volunteer. I'd love to join, just give me a couple days to take care of this really important family thing, my dad's funeral. But Jesus seems to say, no, your business is with the living. Hey, sorry about caring about my family. But Jesus isn't done with his gruff and seemingly crabby and grumpy responses. A third would-be recruit says, Hey, Jesus, I'll follow, but first I need to let my family know and say goodbye to them. Once again, the response from Jesus is, uh, no deal. Once you commit, there's no looking back. Once on the plow, it's straight ahead. Seize the day. Forward. Ouch. So here we have three good faith and honorable volunteers who were all, it seemed, challenged and almost rejected by Jesus. So is that the lesson here? Jesus Christ the drill sergeant instead of Jesus the shepherd? Well, I don't think so. I think the lesson is what Bonhoeffer tried to convey. This discipleship business is not easy. Each three recruit responses reflect some core principles of faith discipleship. Number one, sacrifice. You might have to give up your easy life. Number two, priorities. Your faith needs to be first. And three, commitment. 
Once on the plow, there's no looking back. It's straight ahead. As our guy Martin Luther once said, a religion that gives nothing, that costs nothing, and that suffers nothing is worth nothing. To the three recruits who really are you and me, Jesus isn't angry or cranky or rude, but he's simply saying this grace and love stuff can be difficult and requires that you don't put conditions on the unconditional. Beware, he says, of what some people may call but firsts. Yes, I'll love another, but first let me see if they're the right kind of people. Yes, I'll forgive, but first, has that person been punished or apologized enough to me? Sure, I will give and care for another, but first, do I have enough for myself? And just how much is this going to cost me? Yes, I will open my door, I will open my border, I will open my heart. But first, let me see who's knocking. Do they look like me? Do they act like me? Do they speak like me? It's most certainly true that our faith foundation of grace and peace will never fail. But today's lesson shifts the focus from that eternal gift to the more challenging aspects of discipleship here today and here on earth. That challenge is not about resolving Jesus' words or Jesus' mood, but it's about resolving ourselves and our hearts. It's easy, it's simple to follow Jesus in principle. All of us agree that principles of love your neighbor, welcome the stranger, feed the sick, visit the sick and in prison, feed the hungry, turn the other cheek are good and valuable in principle. But Jesus' challenge to the three people on the road and to us today is to follow that messy and uncomfortable path of loving the unlovable, befriending the stranger, honoring those different from us, to live out those principles and live out those principles unconditionally and absent that but first. We see this illustrated in the old story of the travelers in a third world country who come upon a leper colony. There they observe a nun gently tending to the lepers by binding the weeping wounds of the afflicted. It was not a pretty sight. One of the travelers commented, well, I wouldn't do that for $10,000. The caring nun overhears the comment and says simply, neither would I. So despite the harsh response, we continue to be invited to follow. There are no limitations or exceptions as to who gets to follow, or where we're going, or how we treat others along the way. Jesus doesn't care who we are, or where we're from, or what we have done, or what we've left undone. Citizen, foreigner, old, young, brown, black, white, gay, straight, Christian, Muslim, there are no conditions to his love or hospitality or forgiveness or invitation. And when we eliminate our but firsts, or maybe even our buts first, there's only looking ahead. So you can see Jesus is not in a bad mood. He's not upset with us. He's not angry with us. He's not short with us. He's focused. He's on his way to the cross, and he wants more than anything for us to join. Discipleship is not easy, but true discipleship takes us to a much deeper place in our faith journey, a place of new life, of new joy, and of new peace. Are we perfect? Do we need help and guidance in following? Oh boy, do we ever. But for those times, know that our leader will always turn and extend his guiding hand. And then you can turn and give your helping hand to the next struggling follower. Now, finally, and there's that finally that you've been waiting for, um, I'm just gonna take 30 seconds. I always come up with this personal thing. Many of you know that uh, my father was a Lutheran minister. 
Uh, and I spent all those times sitting with my mother out there listening to him. We've sort of traded places today. Uh, today would be his 112th birthday. So he's sitting out there, up there somewhere with my mother, and I'm up here um, giving uh, a sermon, and I hope I did him proud. Anyway, um, amen, and God bless us, everyone. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved How precious did that grace appear The hour I first believed Through many dangers, toil and snares I have already And brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. Would you join me in reciting the creed, please? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, descended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the church, the creation, and all in need. God of faithfulness, set the face of your church firmly on you rooted in your self-giving love. May the church find freedom in loving our neighbors. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of gentleness, strengthen the earth's ability to heal. Where there are dangerous storms, bring calm. Where there are destructive fires, bring rain. Protect homes, habitats, and livelihoods threatened by climate disasters. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of peace, guide all who govern, that they may place the good of their citizens above self-promotion. Anoint leaders of nations with your spirit of neighborly love. Protect refugees and all who live under tyranny or conflict. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of kindness, reveal your healing presence to all who are sick or dying, especially Dave, Haley, Lori, Brooklyn, Lincoln, Mike, Larry and Lorraine, Tom, Stephanie, Marilee, Duane, Ruth, Amy, and Joyce. And any of those who we name aloud in our hearts. Uphold those who grieve, support the needs of any who are unemployed any who are hungry or have nowhere to lay their heads. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of love, attend to those struggling with addiction, depression, or uncontrolled anger. Provide support systems with loving com companions as they work towards health, that they may 
rest in hope and know the fullness of joy in, in your presence. God of grace, hear our prayer. Bless Caleb and Jacob. Keep them safe as they serve to protect our nation and preserve the freedoms that we hold dear. God of grace, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the people of Ukraine and Eastern Europe, for the war zone reporters, for the leaders of all nations, <laughs> that your beloved children might live in safety and peace without fear. God of grace, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of joy, we give thanks for all who have died and now celebrate the inheritance of life in you. Keep their examples of faithfulness always before us, that we trust your promises in life and in death. God in grace, hear our prayer. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name, and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. And we'll share our sign of peace. Let us pray. Blessed, blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings as you have raised us a new life in Christ. Give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join me in, in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, comfort you, and show the path of show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. Amen. This is my Father's world, and to my listening ears, all nature sings and round me rings the music of the spheres. This is my Father's world, I rest me in the thoughts of rocks and trees, of skies and seas, His hand thy wonders wrought. This is my Father's world, oh let me ne'er forget That though the wrong seems all so strong, God is the ruler yet This is my Father's world, why should my heart be sad? The Lord is King, let the heavens ring, God reigns, let the earth be glad this wonderful day. Go in peace and love your neighbor. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.